this is Rich Kale here on YouTube, Rich Gen X Elsewhere, and we are starting a brand new chapter. We are starting the Testament of Sherlock Holmes. <clears throat> now, uh, this is quite a different game. This is the sixth of the Sherlock Holmes games released by Frogwares. And uh, at the time of this recording, it's actually also the sixth in the timeline of the games. Which is uh, kind of ironic. They had two games that, in their release order, fell into the proper game line timeline of the series. It also has an honors which you can earn. Um, judging by this, we're going to have Toby in this one. I like playing it, uh, doing to uh, playing the Toby sections. Morals don't improve. With your usual happy mixture of cunning and audacity, you recovered all that was stolen. So these are all achievements that we can get in the game. And now we are going to begin the testament. Oh. Let me just check my options here. Subtitles, English, okay. Alright. Accept that. And now let us begin the testament. Sherlock Holmes. kids It's a book about pirates with a treasure map. Hmm. No, I don't think so. I wish that I had seen through all your lies. Oh, start from the beginning, not the middle. <laughs> and so I decided to pick up my pen to relate the most disturbing episode of my life thus far. It all began early one morning in 1898, when Sherlock Holmes invited me to accompany him on a visit to the Marquis of Conningham. Oh. Nice beginning. Watson, my dear fellow, we can now go and inform the Marquis that we have found the Samoan necklace, and very much faster than Inspector Bay. 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 
Have you really solved, solved the theft, theft, Holmes? And so quickly? I have indeed, Watson. And believe me, it was completely unnecessary to spread out the word of London, as our friend A. Hastings calls Bethes. He likes both, both, both his methods are equal to mine, but once again the outcome has contradicted him. him. After all these years, years accompanying you upon your investigations, I thought that by, by now, now I should be reasoning people of following your train of thought. But in this, this particular case, case, I must, I must admit, admit I, I don't, don't understand, understand anything, anything at all. Ah, mm. see, see what you, what you do not observe, observe Watson. Watson. There lies the difference. It is, it is a, matter a matter of course. course. A matter, a matter of, course. of course. In the, in the middle, middle of the night, night when, when everyone is fast, fast asleep, asleep, the surgeon bell, bell within, within that room ring rings out and alerts us. The they they press quickly and, quick and come run running. Run. But the, but the door, door is locked and there is a strong smell of burn from within. A few seconds later, the master of the house, house himself, himself, the Rob Marchioness's husband, husband, and the Marquis of Conningham, arrives and unlocks the door, door using, using the sole key. A fire has started inside the room, but they have they managed, managed to arrive, to arrive in, time in time to put it out. It, it is, is at that, that moment, moment that the Marquis realizes that the famous Samoan necklace, which had been safe within its glass cabinet only a few hours yeah. earlier, has, has now, now disappeared. disappeared. In order, In order to explain, let us confirm my theory before the arrival of Inspector Bain. <laughs> and now we control Sherlock Holmes. Okay. Wow. So that changes our positioning, I guess. So we got matches and a knife here. Look at the broken showcase and click on it, okay. Okay, where oh there it is. This window was cut with a diamond. A clean, discreet piece of work. This is where the necklace was. Mm -hmm. See how tiny the hole is, and not one fingerprint upon the window. It's a left window. Yes. There's two hello. Undoubtedly made by a diamond. Someone tried to cut the glass, but he was interrupted. Therefore, the thief tried to escape through the window, but he was interrupted. Maybe. All the windows are locked. They've not been forced. Okay, now we can go get our magnifying glass. Let us examine the crumpled scores that have fallen off the piano. Nothing of interest. Nothing of. Nothing of interest. Nothing of interest. Nothing of interest. 
These I don't understand why these music scores are covered with soot. If they're covered with soot... That makes... Oh. Yes, I've got that all. What the, the heck did I do there? Okay. Not very well kept, this aquarium. I can see a dead fish floating on the surface. Hmm. A candle. It must have fallen from the chandelier. Hmm. So... Okay. These documents are not very interesting, even though they're addressed to the Minister of Maritime Affairs. Mm. The Marquis himself! Yes. This draft screen makes an ideal hiding place. Yeah. As the theft was committed at night, I conclude that the thief hid himself behind the draft screen and waited until he was alone in the room. When the servants arrived at the door, having been alerted by the bell, they saw evidence of the theft and the fire, but they didn't see the thief. This door is very hard to force. The Marquis is the only person to have the key. The thief could not get out through here until eventually, when the door was opened by the servants. Yes. So now... Hello! Look at all these points! Look at this! Strange. There are some objects here that have been knocked over. Mm -hmm. Footprints! You are not going to get on your knees to examine them. There is no need. It is soot. The servants must have trodden in it while they were putting out the fire. Heading towards his chosen escape route, probably the window, the thief knocked over the stool, which then caught fire. But why didn't he try to put the fire out at once? The fire started here, just beneath the bell pull. Whoever pulled the cord would have had his feet in the fire, unless it was pulled before the fire started. Mm. The chest wasn't opened. The necklace wasn't in it. There. Yeah. I looked at the latch to close window. When all the I oh, with this all the one. windows are locked. They've not been forced. So far, we've checked everything, haven't we? Wait, what's this? Strange. There aren't any prints. Yet I'm sure that the thief hid here. Hmm. Ah, Mr. Holmes. You're already here. Good morning, Inspector. You've arrived just in time. <laughs> hmm. Scotland Yard arrives like the cavalry, always in the nick of time. Ah, but I know that satisfied expression, Mr. Holmes. Have you already solved the case? It's possible. We have retraced the thief's rather unusual footsteps. He is a true acrobat. 
but what I cannot understand is that when the servants entered the room, there was no one to be seen. An acrobat, perhaps, but an invisible one? <laughs> I do not think so. The only explanation is that the thief escaped before the servants arrived. I don't know how, but there is no other way. Half a point for the doctor, nil for the inspector. I am pleased to see that you find the situation amusing, Mr. Holmes. Very well then, explain. Dr. Yeah. Watson was correct when he mentioned acrobatics, but he is mistaken about the nature of the acrobat. As for you, Baines, you're quite incorrect, as the thief was in the room when the servants entered. Explain, for heaven's sake, Mr. Holmes. Mm. Watson, how could a thief be missed in the middle of eight men? I don't know. Because he is very small? Stop teasing us, Holmes. Mm. Exactly. Because he is small. Small and remarkably agile. You're thinking of a monkey? And a trained monkey at that. Without a doubt, a Leontopicathus rosalia from Central America. Hmm. The animal had been hidden inside the room for several hours, calmly awaiting the signal from his master. Once night had fallen and the room was empty, a high-frequency whistle alerted the monkey that it was time to begin the procedure for which he had been trained. Huh. The monkey emerged from his hiding place and used the point of a diamond to open the glass cabinet and steal the necklace. He headed across to the window by the chimney, but knocked over the stool, which in turn knocked aside the fire guard and started the fire. The frightened monkey jumped from the chimney by swinging from the bell pool, thus alerting the house servants. He then went to the window and began to use his diamond to cut a hole, but was interrupted by the staff trying to gain entry via the door, and he panicked again. He ran across the piano, scattering the music scores onto the floor, before hiding the inside the chandelier, knocking over a candle. Finally, huh. The servants and the Marquis entered the room, leaving the door open while they put out the fire. It was during the confusion that our agile little thief made his escape through the doorway. As simple as that. A brilliant explanation! Bravo, Holmes! And the necklace? I can see it from here, my friends. It's right in front of us. We have searched the room from top to bottom, Holmes. How were oh. we unable to find it? because we paid insufficient attention to the only victim of this affair. What victim? No one is dead? Fish. Yes, Watson. A poor goldfish whose destiny was to die, crushed by one of the most precious necklaces in England. Oh? The aquarium is just beneath the chandelier. I understand. The little monkey had likely hung the necklace around its neck and lost it when he leapt from the chandelier. The jewels fell into the aquarium where they remain now. Huh. It is a genuine. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Marquis, here is your necklace. Mm, I have obtained an honor. Just a little wet. Mr. Holmes. This brilliant demonstration does credit to your reputation. Well, thank you so much, Marquis. Do you wish to verify the authenticity of your jewel? No, I recognize it. I have spent many hours admiring it, you know. Good. Mm. I will return it to its box and... Inspector! A bank has just been held up! You must follow me at once! Orders of Scotland Yard! Ah. What times! Sirs, duty calls. My regards, Marquis. And well done again, Mr. Holmes. There, the necklace is in its box. We've lost enough time here. Let's go home, Watson. Ah, very well, as you wish. A good day to you, Marquis. With pleasure, gentlemen. And once again, thank you. Well, that was quite simple, wasn't it? Something's more happening, I can feel it. This morning's newspaper. Holmes, have you read this article about you? No, Watson, not yet, and I won't have time to. Read it before you leave. It's outrageous. If you insist. Hmm. Ah! An autosave. Well, that's nice to know. All right. 
Sherlock Holmes at the home of the Marquis, Marquis of Cunningham. The investigation is a fiasco. Yesterday, the celebrated detective Sherlock Holmes was invited to the manor of the Marquis of Cunningham to supply his conclusions following his investigation into the disappearance of the priceless Samoan necklace. It should be recalled that the lady called in the detective after the police appeared flummoxed in the face of the astonishing circumstances surrounding the theft. Indeed, the valuable piece of jewelry disappeared while the door to the room in which it was displayed was locked. The alarm was raised by the servants, alerted by the room service bell ringing out during the night. When the Marquis, the only person in possession of the key, opened the door, everyone rushed in to extinguish a fire that had started before it was noticed that the necklace had mysteriously vanished. The most astonishing factor is that no thief was found within the room and all the exits were closed. As usual, Mr. Holmes resolved the case in the twinkling of an eye and the jewel was recovered. I will not waste my time on the various explanations as to the disappearance because I would prefer to draw your attention, dear readers, to the last surprising developments in the case. Following the departure of Sherlock Holmes, who placed the necklace in the safe himself, the Marquis noticed that the jewel was nothing but a poor copy of the original? Let it not be forgotten that the Samoan necklace, although plain and without ornament, is unique because of the rarity of its pearls which are found only in a small part of the lagoon of the archipelago of the same name, and to which scientists attribute their exceptional quality to the strong density of crystal and of argonite that they are made of. The priceless necklace brought here at the beginning of the century by Lord Fenton Arwick, the Marquis' grandfather and an eminent explorer, should have been part of her daughter's dowry. for her marriage to the Duke of Newcastle. So I'm going to place a simple question. Should we not, in all open mindedness, ask ourselves if the necklace was not simply and deliberately exchanged for a fake by Mr. Holmes himself? I am aware, dear readers, that the brutality of this question without any pre preconceptions may certainly shock some of you. But the facts are there, and our thoughts of, and judgment should not be confused with the regard with which we all share of the famous detective. It is not the first time the that the Globe Explorer has expressed its reservations as to Sherlock Holmes' methods, do not forget our counter-investigation into the escape of Arsene Lupin, the Frenchman who took blind pleasure in tarnishing the image of our royal family and who, by lucky chance, managed to elude capture by Mr. Holmes. At the time, we did not hesitate to consider a, tactic, tac a tacit complicity on the part of the latter, for those who are familiar with Mr. Holmes, it is quite apparent that his character traits show more of the opportunist and brilliant usurper than that of an altruistic defender of the law. I would drag the, draw the attention of our readers to the suggestion that this, that the description of this gentleman provided by his friend Dr. John Watson through his stories is a long way from the truth. His behavior is derisive, contemptuous, haughty, and offensive towards the police, and in particular towards Inspector Barnes, replacing Inspector Lestrade, who is currently convalescent, and a habitual abuser of narcotics such as heroin and cocaine. This is why, dear readers, it is important to disregard Sherlock Holmes' good reputation in order to form an objective opinion and to ask the pertinent question, was the necklace that Holmes found already a fake? If that was the case, why did he not mention it, and why should he insist on placing it back within the safe himself? Has the detective some unsavory interest in this affair? Or is it a simple case of deceit in order to steal the extraordinary Samoan necklace? It is up to you, dear readers, to form your own opinions, but you can count on upon your humble servant to continue revealing to the public the doubtful methods and motivations of one who in the future I shall not hesitate to call Sherlock Holmes the usurper to be continued O'Farley. Okay, Prince Woodville recognize. Okay. I don't know. That's possibly important too, but... Prince Woodville, French culinary expert and bagpipe player, might be our next king. That's not so shocking, my dear fellow. <laughs> You know exactly to which article I'm referring, Holmes. How can Farley dare to tarnish your reputation like that? 
You know, Watson, that wherever glory walks, jealousy is bound to follow. As for the forgery of the necklace, I suspect that we shall soon be enlightened in this regard. Come in, Inspector Baines. The door's open. Ah, Mr. Holmes. How did you know I was here? You are one of our rare visitors who avoids the second-to-last step of the stairs, which creaks dreadfully. And if I add the clinking of the handcuffs at your belt, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Inspector? Mm -hmm. Have you read that, Rag? Mm. Yes, I have. Inspector, I assume that you have the fake necklace with you. It's why you're here. Your superiors would like me to examine it. Indeed. They would like you to confirm or deny putting this fake in the box. Can't that wait? I must go to the house of Lord Peregrine Maitland, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. Hmm. Well, I suppose we have to get go through all the choices. Inspector, can you explain this slander? Has the necklace of the Samoas really been replaced by a fake? I don't know how the reporter got hold of the information, but it's true. About the necklace, of course. I wouldn't permit myself to question the integrity and honesty of Mr. Holmes. The hmm. necklace is a forgery? Impossible! I saw the Marquis authenticated before my very eyes, before Holmes returned it to its place. Mr. Holmes, the Marquis believes Osmond Farley's theory. I shouldn't be surprised if the reporter isn't behind all this slander about you. He's a freelancer, well known for his explosive and subjective articles. In any case, the Marquis assures us that you were the last person to have the necklace in your hands. Let's return to the Marquis's house, Holmes. I'm sure that we'll have no trouble in taking apart this theory. It is unnecessary. Such allegations collapse on their own, like one of Mrs. Hudson's souffles. Let us leave the police to solve this problem and turn our attention to the matters in hand. <laughs> Perhaps you are right, Holmes. Let's ask... Let's and the Marchioness? She is beside herself. Without the necklace, her marriage is compromised. It is the principal item of the young woman's dowry. <laughs> what a lovely marriage. Yeah. Holmes, forgive me for insisting, but don't you want to examine the fake jewellery? Watson, I have an appointment, and it's out of the question that I arrive late. It will only take you a couple of minutes. You really must quell the suspicions put forward in this appalling article. If you will allow me, Inspector, be my guest. Okay. Very well. All right. So, let's see. This pearl is a different color. Yeah. Lady. These three pearls are of poor quality. And look at this one. That's a small one. That don't even look right. This pearl is too small. It is not in its place here. Too many defects. This necklace is a fake. This is nothing but a vulgar copy. And at a glance, it would appear that the forger has intended for it to be seen as such. How could we have been fooled by such a blatant imitation? I don't understand. Hmm. Yes, how is it possible? Holmes, do you have a theory about this? I have absolutely no idea. You insisted that I examine the necklace, and I have done so. Now it is important that I keep my appointment. I'm sure, Inspector, that you will throw some light on this affair. Hmm. Holmes. You may accompany me, Watson, if you care to do so. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll keep you informed as to my inquiries. All right. Goodbye, Inspector. You mentioned a bishop, didn't you? Are we going to his home? Yes, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. I put his address on our map of London on my desk. Would you get it for me, please? Okay. All right, Holmes. And now we control Dr. Watson. On his desk. Uh, desk, desk, desk. Ah, here's his desk. I have found your map. Okay, so that's where we're going, and what we're going to do is we're going to go there, and the game will autosave like usual, and we'll probably uh, continue this then next time.
Uh, let, let me see what some of these options are here. Okay, documents. Menu is not available. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, and we got an honor. Elementary. Okay. And that's our map. Very good. All right, so let's head here. The game will probably autosave as we arrive. We walk in like that. The police? Already? How did you know? May we see the Bishop of Knightsbridge? Yes. Yes, of course. But come in. Huh. Oh my, something... What has uh... this happened, Reverend? What? I... I don't know. It was last night, I think. I only just arrived, and I have made this macabre discovery. My God. God. How horrible. horrible. I haven't called anyone. How did you know that? Holmes, look! The bishop, appallingly mutilated. How, How dreadful. Mutilated and killed. He was such a good man. How could, How could anyone be so good? Look, look, look at him. He is barely, barely recognizable now. now. How could any of God's children be responsible for... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm I'm now, 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 now please, please try, try to calm yourself and focus, focus, because, because we, we will need, need your assistance. assistance. Do you, Do you have, have any idea as to the motive behind this? I haven't had time to do an injury. Nothing I think is a pistol. pistol. And anyway, 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 no, no, Reverend. I, I am sure of our hosts, and this, and this is, is Dr. Watson. Watson. We, we are here at the request of the Bishop. In that in case, case, I must ask you to leave. I'm not allowed to, to touch, touch anything. anything. I must get in touch with your authority without further delay. Reverend, Reverend, when, Reverend, when the inspectors, inspectors of Scott Yard, Yard find themselves at their end, end, which they quite often do, I assure you, then they turn to me for help. If you will allow us to continue our investigation, then you shall have the answers to all of your questions. I don't even know you. I'm going to call up to where you're going to It would be better for everyone, Reverend, if you kept your temper. This is not my This affair promises to be a complex one. Therefore, we must not overlook the slightest detail. Yes, Holmes. I am keeping a meticulous set of notes. I have created a very clever deduction One thing we can be sure of at the moment is that this crime was not for gain. The Reverend has informed us that nothing valuable was stolen. And indeed, indeed it would seem that the bishop, bishop had nothing of any worth to take. Very good, Watson. Do continue. Hmm. And, uh... Deduction bill. Make the right deductions based on the facts you have. Okay. And we have auto-saved. And we will look at that later. As always, this is Rich Kale here on YouTube, Rich Genex Elsewhere. I invite you to subscribe to the channel if you've watched the end. Thank you very much. And uh, we will be continuing with this mystery, the Testament of Sherlock Holmes, next time. I have played through all the other games that, at the time of this recording, were released and are set prior to this one. Uh, that includes Sherlock Holmes vs. Jack the Ripper, Sherlock Holmes The Awakened, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Testament, er, Crimes and Punishments, I'm my bad on that one. Sherlock Holmes' Nemesis, or also known as Sherlock Holmes vs. Arsene Lupin, and Sherlock Holmes' Secret of Silver Earring. Uh, once Chapter 1 comes out, I will pick that up, and if it comes out after I finish, before I finish this, that'll be the next game plays. If it comes out after I finish this, uh, it will be played after the next game in the sequence of the timeline. I'm also working my way through Aliens vs. Predator, the 2010 release. I'm working my way through Portal. I am working my way through The Witness. I am working my way through the Zork franchise in the chronological order, so I'll be starting up Zork 1 next in that playthrough list. I'm working my way through Gibbous, a Cthulhu adventure, a very fun game with a snarky cat in it. I love it. I'm working my way through the Monkey Island franchise, currently on Tales of Monkey Island, the last game in the franchise. And I am working my way through Call of Cthulhu, the 2018 release. I also do some runs through the game of Monstrum and Monstrum 2. 
uh, the Monster 2 runs go up on a Thursday morning, usually. I have retrospectives that go up for every game I've beaten. Those go up usually on a Saturday morning. And I am also reading through some of my prose works, which are should be popping up on a Tuesday morning. Uh, next time around, again, we will continue this. Please subscribe. I appreciate it. And until next time, have fun. Bye.